Hello, my name is Sydney, and today I thought I would do the Year of the Writer tag. I was tagged by Stephen Partridge, and I will link his video down below. So like Stephen said in his video, this tag is more about the writer themselves and not so much about the things that they're writing. And so if you don't already know very much about me, then this is a good chance for you guys to get to know me. There are 12 questions, and they're each based on different months in the year. So let's start with my birthday month, January. So number one, January. Explain your channel in six words. Let's see. Creative writing, trials, tribulations, inspiration, dreaming. I don't know. <laughs> Number two, February. What are five things you love that aren't related to writing or books? Ooh, okay. Gotta say carbohydrates. That's my, that's my ride or die right there. <laughs> I mean, anything from like cornbread to pecan pie to carrot cake to biscuits. I think biscuits are my all-time favorite, like... Biscuit and cornbread have both been nicknames at different points in my life. Um, so that's one thing that I love besides writing. Carbohydrates. Let's see. Music. I was thinking about this today. When I listen to music, especially if I listen to old favorite songs, it's sort of like going through a photo album where like when you look at old photos, you know, they might make you feel different things, make you feel good, make you feel not so good. And I feel like when I listen to songs, it's like I'm sort of doing that with my emotions like certain songs make me feel different ways and sometimes I listen to songs to help me through things like if I'm feeling really anxious about something or if I'm feeling upset or even if I'm just feeling like super happy and I just feel like jamming like there's always a song for that I love traveling I grew up with my dad in the military so I grew up overseas I lived in Germany and I lived in Japan and I visited a bunch of other places and I definitely plan to visit a lot more places and I'm just really excited about the world and the people and the different cultures and like trying new foods and I can just feel that as I get older I can feel my mind like opening and expanding and wanting to try new things and take in new experiences and to see new things and especially with my story storm cloud which is a very global story like it takes a pl it takes place in a lot of different places and so the more that I learned about the world the more fodder I have to write about in storm cloud a fourth thing that I love is mythical creatures <laughs> specifically mermaids like I really really love mermaids like I'm looking at my wall right now and there's already there's a couple of things with wall art over there with mermaids and I've got my other mermaid back here if you can kind of see her like I don't know what it is about mermaids but I just love I mean going along with mythical creatures like I love mythical creatures because they they represent the idea that there's something else that either could be out there or at least that humans are creative enough to come up with things like mermaids I wish that I was a mermaid because how fun would that be to just be like swimming around, flipping your tail, speeding through the ocean? Have you ever watched that show H2O Just Add Water? It's like, it's an Australian show and it was sort of like a teen show, but man, that was the stuff back in my middle school days. There's just something about mermaids that speaks to like mystery and possibility and like beauty and all these different things. And another thing that I really love that's kind of random is alliteration, which if you don't know what alliteration is, it's basically when you have a series of words, it could be two words or more, where they all start with the same sound. So like, Peter Piper picked the peck of pickled peppers. And I just like things like that that play with language in a really interesting way. And it can be really fun to sneak some of those into my writing, especially since I'm writing a novel and you don't typically see a whole lot of that. You see that more in like poetry. I guess that's five things. <laughs> Let's move on to the third one. March, what is one thing you are hopeful for in 2019? I guess one thing, and it sort of relates to what I said earlier about traveling, is that I really want to plan a trip to somewhere new this year, somewhere I've never been before, somewhere that's on my bucket list, or something that, some place I've maybe never considered, but it would be a really cool place to go. So I kind of hope for that. April, explain your current work in progress in a terrible way. An emotional wreck of a teenager who can control plants and this guy gets herself into trouble and ends up imprisoned by the people who are in charge of manipulating earth yeah that sounded pretty bad to me <laughs> may what's your favorite flower so i really love cherry blossoms because they remind me of japan where i grew up but i guess they have pollen in them and i'm allergic to pollen but still, I really love cherry blossoms because not only are they really beautiful, but there's some, there's something about the fact that they're very temporary. There's something about that ephemeralness that's really intriguing. You know, it's like 
if you blink, they're gone, you know, you'll miss them. So you have to really watch out. They're only here for like a week and they don't even bloom everywhere. They only bloom in certain places. June, what are your plans for the summer months? I'll be traveling a lot for work. I think I'm gonna be on a plane like every other week. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> also, I'm in a studio. There's no central air. I don't even have an, AC, an air unit anymore because it was a stupid thing and it was blocking the window so I couldn't open the window. So basically, I'm hoping that I don't overheat in my apartment. I think I'll be fine. I was fine last summer and I didn't even use the air unit. I got a fan. I'll probably buy another fan and I can always let a breeze in through the window. So that's my plan is to not die of heat stroke. That's optimistic. July, tell everyone where you're from. I never know how to answer this question. And I mentioned it before, like I grew up, my dad was in the military, so I mean, I was born in one place. My first few years of life were spent in another place. The childhood years that I actually remember were in a different place, and then most of my school was in the fourth place. So like I grew up in all these different places, I actually don't know where home is. Now when people ask me, I just say Virginia, because that's the last place I lived before I moved here. And it's also where I lived the longest, like I lived there for 11 years of my life. To answer your question, New York, Japan, Germany, and Virginia. That's where I'm from. <laughs> August, when is your birthday and how old will you be? My birthday's in January and I will be 25 come next January. I will be a quarter centenarian. Centenarian. Quarter, quarter centenarian. And I've already gotten my quarter life crisis out the way, so we're good. <laughs> September, how do you plan on juggling writing with a full time life? So I'm kind of learning to do this. I've certainly got it, gotten better at it the last couple of months since the year started. I was a mess in the fall of 2018. Thank God those days are behind us, I hope. Knocking on wood. I think the important thing for me is that, yes, I have a full-time job, so I really only have like the evenings when I come home and then the weekends to work on my writing. But I don't do it every day. It's hard for me to like, sometimes I can do it every day, but sometimes I just don't want to. Like today is Saturday and the last time I wrote on, worked on my story was last Sunday. And it's not that I didn't have time to in the week. I could have, I came home at the end of each day and just like relaxed. Like I just wanted to relax. You know, you're at work all day, you're staring, I'm, I'm staring at a computer all day. Sometimes I just want to come home and like do nothing. You know, I don't want to have to think about anything. It's important I've learned to give myself breaks and to give myself a pass if there are days when I just don't want to write. But the flip side of that is just being able to schedule in time to write when you can. Like today I just went to Barnes and Noble and I was there for four and a half hours and I got like three or four chapters done um, and I'm really happy with the work that I did and I feel really really good. So and then tomorrow I think I'm gonna work on my story a bit more tonight and then tomorrow again and then we'll see what happens you know. October. What is your favorite holiday and why? Okay, my mom's birthday is on Halloween. Me and my dad share a birthday on Three Kings Day. Halloween to Three Kings Day, it includes Thanksgiving and it includes Christmas as well. That is one giant holiday for me. That entire time of year, it's just the best time of year. Everything from like the fall, the leaves changing color, all the sweaters, teas, cozy weather, and then that bleeds into like Thanksgiving and all the food oh my gosh it's so good and me and my mom cook together we cook the same dishes every year and it's just so good it's my favorite meal of the year then we have Christmas and I go get to spend that with my dad and my stepmom and stepbrothers and it's just really fun and then I also spend my birthday with them usually so it's just I just love that time of year <laughs> November name five things you are grateful for family friends are a given I am 24 and I live on my own away from both of my parents but I have always been a very ind independent person. I grew up an only child, I grew up moving around a lot so I've always been very much able to keep myself entertained. From that I've become a serious serious introvert like I swear I'm like 93% introvert if not more and I absolutely love being alone and I love that I am comfortable with being alone so I'm grateful for that and I'm grateful that I am independent enough to be able to rely on myself and to take care of myself the way I need to. I am grateful to have a job that allows me to more or less live the life that I want so I'm grateful to at least have a job that's, that's stable and that has a longevity to it so I don't have to worry about like you know needing to apply to a new job right now you know um, that's two things I am grateful for my dreams and my ambitions 
and my ability to make these things happen even if it comes along very gradually. Um, I have so many things that I want to do in the future and I'm really happy that I first of all am able to think of things that I want to do because I know there are people who they don't even know what to do next. They don't know what they want with their lives um, and though they may eventually find those out I'm just really happy that I already have and that I've already been taking steps to make those things happen. Um, I am grateful for writing, of course, and I am grateful for having it as a creative outlet. Without it, I don't know what I would be doing or who I would be. I really think that writing is such a huge part of my identity and it allows me to really sort through who I am. This is, this is sort of out there, but I'm grateful that there are people who care about this planet who are making strides to turn around the damage that we've done. We've done so much damage and I really don't want to get into the, make this a whole lecture, but I'm just really happy that, you know, there are people who are fighting for a better tomorrow. Did that get really preachy? Oh my gosh. Okay, next question. Last question. December. What is the worst and best advice that you have been given as a writer? Oh my gosh. I don't even know. And I had a whole video where I talked about five pieces of both good advice and bad advice. And I will link those both down below if you want to check out more answers, I guess, to this question. Some advice that I prefer not to follow is to write what you know. I feel like the one of the best ways to learn is to write about things you don't know. You know, like you can write about what you know, like that's totally fine, but you shouldn't be limited to that. Like, do you think I know anything about Svalbard, Norway? No, I've never even been there, okay? But I wrote about it, I'm writing about it, <laughs> okay? So, I mean, that's just one concept. Like, I don't, I didn't know anything about, like, the weather and how the world works until I started working on Stormcloud and doing research and whatnot. So that's, and that's one reason I, like, love thinking about the world and thinking about the weather and, like, traveling is because of the, of, is because of Stormcloud. Like, and all the research that I've done about it, like, I've become, I've fallen in love with this topic because of my story because I didn't and I didn't know anything about it before I started writing this story I think the best writing advice and this is or at least some really good writing advice and it's pretty classic writing advice is you know like terrible first drafts and like how they're okay and how they are the norm and how first drafts are supposed to be bad and that it's revisions that allow you to improve them you know so like that's just that's one of those hard I think that's one of the hardest pieces of advice for all writers to learn or for most writers to learn is that it's okay that your first draft sucks it's not supposed to look like the books that are already published on the shelves who knows how many countless 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 drafts those stories have gone through before they become the gleaming you know stories we love so when you write your first draft and it sucks know that the, you have done what so many people have not been able to do first of all finish a draft second of all have the the motivation and the passion to do another draft. Know that it gets better with each draft. Anyway, that was the year of the writer tag. Thank you, Steven, for tagging me. Um, like I said, I will link his video down below as well as the creator's video. If you watch this video and you want to do the tag, then by all means, go ahead. I tag you. The cliche camera high five, right? Thank you guys so much for watching. I upload videos every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Be here or be square. <laughs> I can't believe I said that again. Give this video a like, hit subscribe, and I will see you next time. Toodaloo! La, la, la.